Back in the mid 2010s, the internet was taken by storm with a new application called Vine. People seemed obsessed with the app's six second video gimmick, and it felt as if practically everyone under the age of 30 was using it. However, even though it was a force to be reckoned with, at the beginning of 2017, the service was shut down indefinitely. To this very day, many wonder what happened to cause Vine's sudden downfall. And the answer to that is actually pretty unique when compared to other former Silicon Valley titans. But to understand why it was closed down, let's briefly look at what caused the app to become successful in the first place. To begin, let's jump all the way back to 2012 when Vine was started by three work colleagues at the company Jetsetter who came up with the idea for an app that would enable users to capture short snippets of their day-to-day -day lives on video. They built a beta and pitched their idea to Twitter, who were so impressed that they bought them out for a whopping $30 million. The social media platform saw Vine's concept as the perfect complement to their short-form tweets. A few months later, Vine was launched to the public and was nothing short of an instant hit, quickly becoming one of the most downloaded apps in the entire world. Users were fascinated by its six second video limit, many taking it as a challenge to create the most entertaining video possible in such a short amount of time. This more or less ushered in a new wave of online entertainment. Over the next few years, this platform would birth the careers of some of the most popular names in the entertainment business. Shawn Mendes, Lele Pons, Cameron Dallas, The Paul Brothers, and Ruth B are just a few of the names that gained traction because of Vine. With hundreds of millions using the service and it being a seemingly endless incubator of internet talent, it was a surprise to many that the app actually wasn't doing very well behind the scenes. To understand Vine's demise, we first need to understand its monetization, or rather the lack thereof. In tech, it's very common for companies to lose money for years as they develop and grow, relying on wealthy investors to keep things running in the meantime, in this case, Twitter. So the survival of the platform depended on how long Twitter was willing to keep it afloat, hoping it would become profitable later on down the road. But even though the app had a massive install base, as time went on, the long-term sustainability became bleak, partially due to management. Users didn't realize it at the time, but since 2014, the team running the app was kind of in shambles, with managerial roles being tossed from person to person. Just a year after Vine's launch, all three of its founders either quit or were fired. Vine was then taken over by a man named Jason Toff, who left just two years later and handed the reins over to Hannah Donovan, who had little experience running a company before taking the job. The constant executive juggling hurt employee morale and impacted confidence from Twitter. The loss of faith was understandable because without a strong leader in tech, you'll be eaten alive by the competition. During the platform's rise, many companies wanted a piece of that fine pie. Most notably, Instagram launched their own video service, which allowed users to post 15 second video clips, later increased to a full minute. This attracted many users who were at first interested by buying six second limit, but quickly became frustrated and wanted a place where they could stretch their legs a bit more. To quote a former Vine executive, Instagram video was the beginning of the end. Vine didn't move fast enough to differentiate. In other words, as the years went on, Vine became stagnant. And while it was still popular, it stopped growing at the speeds it did when it first came out. And as I've said before in these videos, if an app is losing money and market share, the future becomes bleak. Things weren't helped by the fact that the platform's parent company wasn't doing that well either. By 2016, Twitter's stock price had tanked by a full 75% as the company struggled to find solid footing in the ever-changing social media landscape. They needed to find ways to cut costs and become more profitable. And soon their eyes became set on a division that was experiencing a mutiny from its largest users. Three years into Vine's life, the app's top users noticed that the views weren't as good as they used to be. On top of this, the company had become slow to implement much needed features that creators were demanding, such as ways to block out harassment. This caused tensions to grow. By 2016, many of Vine's top stars were thinking about jumping ship completely for other sites. So they gave Vine one last offer. 
20 of the biggest creators came together demanding $1.2 million a piece to continue making three six second long videos a week on each of their accounts. At this point, the already struggling financially Twitter had two options either start paying their top talent to stay on the sites, or cut their losses and let them leave, which would inevitably tank the once flourishing platform. Twitter chose the latter, and as a result, all the Viners moved their focus to other platforms as Twitter announced that they would be shutting down Vine for good, as the writing was already on the wall. The app was kept alive for a short time as Vine Camera, which allowed users to record six second videos for Twitter or their phone, but the tool wasn't very popular. On top of this, for quite some time, Twitter kept up an archive of all of the videos ever posted on Vine so people could continue to enjoy the content. However, in 2019, this was shut down as well, officially ending the original short-form video platform. Ever since leaving the company, Vine's co-creator David Hoffman had been working on a successor to the original app. This mystery project went under the working title of V2, before officially being rebranded as Byte in May of 2018. After delays, it was officially launched in January of 2020. However, Byte hardly set the world on fire the way Vine did, with few using it. It turns out there just wasn't much of a demand for a follow-up to Vine. Many of the app's former stars have moved on to much more successful and lucrative careers on YouTube and Instagram, with the void for short-form video content seeming to be filled by TikTok. The other two founders of Vine, Russ and Colin, went on to invent the worldwide phenomenon HQ Trivia. As the app was rising, Colin colluded with another board member to kick Russ out of the CEO position so he could take charge of the company instead. Not too long after though, Colin was found lifeless in his Manhattan apartment, as he had passed away from an accidental overdose of fentanyl-laced heroin, and Trivia HQ fell apart shortly thereafter. In conclusion, Vine will remain an important footnote of internet history. It pioneered short-form online content and was responsible for discovering some of the biggest names in online entertainment. While it did bleed money throughout its entire existence, I still choose not to consider it a failure per se, as its influence will have a lasting impact on the World Wide Web. Je peux vous 